let's talk about object-oriented programming. All right, we don't find ourselves in IntelliJ once more. No, we are actually in a presentation over here because object-oriented programming, I want to basically introduce to you the general idea as a theory first, and I highly recommend you watch this, even though it is a little bit of theory. It might be not as exciting as actually programming something. I can, I promise you that it will serve you very well. I tried to condense this as best I can, so let's take a look. So what is object-oriented programming? Well, in a broad sense, object-oriented programming is a way of programming where everything is an object. And the two main things of this are a class and an object. Now, we've already heard the term class before, and I might have mentioned object once or twice before as well. But the general idea is that a class is a blueprint for an object, while the object itself is an instance of that class. We're going to see a couple of examples of that in a second and we'll learn even more terms that are quite important because there are actually quite a few terms that we want to know over here that you definitely have to sort of remember and keep in the back of your mind because I will be using them going forward and so you have to know what each of these different things are. So like I said, a class or classes is a more or less, you can think of this as a user-defined data type. So now we're getting into some pretty crazy cool things, right? They are used as a template or a blueprint to create objects, right? So you can have a class that basically tells you, okay, this thing needs whatever different things, right? So a person could have an age and a name and an address, things like that. And then you create that as an object. And that now is an instance of the person class, which is an actual person. And that would be considered an object. These classes, they include methods and fields, and both of those are called members. Now, the object itself is an instance of a class with defined data. So while the class is only the template or the blueprint, the object itself is an actual instance. Now, the reason why I keep repeating this is basically because this was my personal thing that I didn't quite understand in the very beginning when I learned all of the object-oriented programming. And that is why I basically focus on this a little bit more in the hopes that maybe when you're like, I'm not quite sure what all of this means, that this makes a lot of sense. But once again, we'll see an example in a second, which is going to be definitely clarifying for this. And then we have members of a class. Now, this can be methods or functions. Now, I will say this. There's a lot of debate about what is a method and what is a function. In theory, you can use method and functions as a synonym in most cases. However, there is a little bit more nuance for this. If you want to dig down like really deep into computer science and stuff like that, for you as beginners, it's totally fine if you say either methods or functions. I personally prefer methods over here, but that's fine. Methods or functions, they define behavior for an object, right? So they can basically be called on that particular object and modify the object itself or other members of it. So the example would be maybe you have a birthday method and when you call that, then an age field gets incremented. And what is a field? Well, a field or an attribute are basically variables that are defined in the class that store some relevant data that is related to that class. So once again, in a person class, you might store the age as an integer variable and that is then a field. Then there's a very important thing that is called a hierarchy. Now, we're just going to look at this for one moment over here, just that you once again have heard the terms. So a couple of terms that you need to know is class, object, members, methods, and fields. Those are basically the general terms that you need to know. And then there are a couple of other terms, and that is a superclass and a subclass. Because in object-oriented programming, because everything is an object, you can inherit certain behavior. So when we have a human, right, we can say, well, wait a second. When we have a human and a kangaroo, they have some sort of the same behavior because they're both bipedal animals, right? So we can abstract some of the behavior from the human and the kangaroo and say that a superclass of this, right? So a class that inherits some behavior to human and kangaroo could be the bipedal animal over here. And we can even go further because whether or not you have a bipedal animal or a quadruped animal, they are both animals. So you can abstract this even more. And in theory, you can continue to go and you will actually see something like this a relevant example for Minecraft modding might be an entity. So an entity is nothing else than a mob, right? So you have a zombie, but a zombie, when you think about it, you can have a zombie, but a husk, it's almost the same thing, right? So you can have some sort of super class that sort of defines similar functionality for both of them. So from the perspective of the biped animal, the animal class is its super class, right? So you go up, animal is the super class of biped animal, while kangaroo would be the subclass of the biped animal class. Just so that you heard this before, once again, we're going to see all of these things in examples in the coming tutorials, but it's very important that you've heard the terms before and that they are not going to overwhelm you. Right, and now one example. So let's say 
classes and objects to instances. So let's say I have a dog class and its members are going to be the following fields. We have an image over here. Maybe that's a string, right? We have a name that's a string and an age integer. If we now want to create a new dog, right? What we can do is we can write dog Benji. That would be the name of the variable equal to a new dog because we're creating a new instance of that dog. That is why the new keyword here is a very relevant. We're passing in the string image. We're passing in the string name and then we're passing in the age. And all of a sudden, there he is, Benji. So we have created a new instance of the dog class. However, what we can do is, well, wait a second, we can just do this again. And all of a sudden we have Jeremy over here, who's looking very cute as well, who is seven years old. So you can see that while both of them are of the class dog, right? Both of the dog class, they're both individual objects or instances of that particular class. Right, and I can continue to go. So, for example, here we have Charlie, who is 11. And once again, this is a different instance of the same class. And basically, I want to drive this home. Right, that is the general idea. While they're all dogs, they're all different individual dogs. The same thing would go for persons, right? You and your brother, for example, you're both people or you're both of a person class or a human class. However, of course, you're two in different individual humans, right? So you would be different instances of that particular class. And here towards the end to reiterate once again, the couple of different terms that you should definitely try to familiarize yourself with is the class or classes, object or objects, methods and fields. And basically those two are members over here. And no worries, we're going to jump right into using all of those terms and actually and actually practically using all of the theory that we've seen right here in the next tutorials, specifically this one, where we'll immediately jump in with classes and objects. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.